Blade steel. It's time for the roundup once again. Um, I'm just going to tackle this one just with a few talking points that I've sort of had uh, asked either a few times and then some cool stuff that has uh, surfaced uh, since I last did this. So when I last finished my last update video, the uh, steel that I had most recently done was Nihilox. Nihilox, the steel, the name that sounds like something that gave everyone cancer in the 40s, Nihilox. So that's all done. Um, since then I've done a whole bunch of steels. I've gone H1, I've done retests of AUS8, 420HC, 3, uh, 3V, I've done SK5, CTS 204P, Super Gold, Powder Steel, CPM 154, that ends up being A2. Um, uh, I did the LA Police Gear Investigation to see if that was real S35VN. Turns out it performed similarly to it. Uh, L6, which was a pretty um, seldom used carbon steel. Did some good numbers, I think in the late 80s maybe. Um, 440A, which is a shit steel that's still used in lots of junk knives. Um, AUS8, Scandi test, um, which as often happens when you put a really acute grind like a Scandi grind on something like a full Scandi, cuts for a little bit longer but then goes duller like that. Um, CPM 20CV, much requested, um, which is like a sister steel to 204P and M390. Uh, ABL, which is like a um, stainless steel that lots of custom makers use because it's quite easy to forge with, and that did good numbers too, like pretty good, uh, like I think 80 or so. So I did a retest of 110V. I did an interest piece on how low you should go blade steel, um, really where I said that, you know, about VG10 is probably what you're going to notice. If I could, I would have probably I'd abolish 8CR and down, and get rid of all that stuff because they don't really do much well at all. Um, work with, but then yeah, sort of suggested VG10 is probably about what noticeable, you know, if you carry a knife a lot, it's where you might start noticing that your, your blade's, you know, pretty good, but needs to be sharpened a bit more, so it's okay, whatever. Um, did a 440C test on a lion steel knife and got a better result than on the Ganzo knife. Maybe the Ganzos aren't 440C or they're a poorer treatment. The lion steel Gan, uh, 440C cut about VG10 levels, which is cool. Uh, I did D2 on my Viper, so that was a bit of a disappointing result from the Viper. And then even when I put the proper edge on it, like a V-grind, didn't do very well either. So that was a bit of a shame. Uh, I did AUS8 and VG10 once again, uh, and they both got sort of similar-ish numbers. Did M4 on the Benchmade Contago, a second test. It did a lot better than the M4 on the Mantra, which was interesting. So Spydeco or either the steel is lower, um, lower on the Rockwell scale because the Benchmade is 64 and the Mantra is 60 or 61. So that's three points of Rockwell. Does that make a difference? Some people say it doesn't at all. Some people say absolutely. Who knows? That's just what the numbers were. Um, 8CR13 MOV. I did another test with the CRKT Noma. Again, it did what you would expect. Not very well. Not super long anyway. Uh, I did S90V on the Spyderco Native. Um, S90V cut for a long, long time. It was good. Um, I did my Y-Start Gin 01 D2 test and it wasn't D2 at all. It actually cut about the same amount of time as the 440A test that I'd done recently. And then when you look up the knife, there's an identical Boca knife that's made of 440A. So, uh, And then the last, most recent one I've done is K390. So that was like a steel and a Spyderco police there. So that's all the things I've done since the last test. So since the last roundup review, uh, what's the news? What's been going on? Well, let's have a look at my, I've got, I've had two, um, two others that have been doing their own cut tests, which has been awesome. Uh, one fellow, uh, Stassa, who probably, you might've seen his channel around. Um, uh, Stassa has done uh, just a couple. He did some Stedman 440C. Got about 120 cuts, I think. I think he's using a V edge rather than my convex edge. And he's doing it with the same paper, no longer slicing paper method. So he's got a pretty good result from some 440C. Highly variable steel. Possible different with his edge, whatever. Very interesting. Interested to see, and I've said this a few times, I don't really mind what you... I'm happy if the numbers are completely different. All I'm sort of after to sort of put myself is that the steels are in roughly the same order. So I'd be a bit bummed if you got a great result of 440C and then a terrible result with M4, you know, like you'd be a bit, mm, maybe all this is wrong, but no one's really had that yet. But anyway, you can check Stasis out as well. Um, now, uh, one of my viewers, Jared, has done a, no, Julian, 
Jared, I'll get to Jared in a sec. Julian has done a graph for me on a lot of my stills, so that was cool. I'm gonna put that graph in the thing below. People were always saying, hey, graph your data, Pete. I'm like, I don't know how. I'm terrible at computers and Excel and stuff. I can use movie, iMovie, and I can use the internet on a computer, and that is it. I'm just not, uh, you know, and I, and I don't fall instantly for the lottery scam when I get the random lottery email. So I'm good at computers in that sense. Maybe I'm just good at life. When that guy says, oh, you've won the, the Polynesian lottery. Um, you just need to send us 20 grand and then we'll send you the million. I'm not so out of touch that I fall for that, but um, yeah, I'm not the best. But so yeah, Julian was awesome and did a graph for me. So I'll try and put that up somewhere, however that works. Jared has been doing cut tests. He has been going, let's have a look. I'll get his exact, so he has been doing he goes all the way through to 1500 grit on a KME. So he's putting a 17.5 degree um, DPS edge. So mine's 20 DPS. He's putting a much, much better uh, edge. So say on his BD1, I got 112 cuts. He got 297 cuts. On his knockout, which is 14C28N, my 71 cuts became 199 cuts with him. So you can see he's like almost getting, he's getting more than double. But consistently, like, so his BD1 still did more than the 28N. But yeah, he's just almost adding, like, not adding a whole zero, but doing bigger numbers, which I'm kind of thankful I don't get because my hands would be shot. My workshop edge is not the best for actually using a knife, like, for having the most long-lasting edge ever. I use it mainly because it's easy to keep doing. And, and I'll talk about a point about that raise just today in a second as well. But yeah, Jared has been smashing it out. He's been, like... Um, he ended up getting like ridiculous amounts on S110V, like he's in a thousand. So he got 1603 cuts on his paramilitary two in S110V. That's insane. And that could very well be a case of that steel responding much better to his, um, di he'd used a 1500 grit diamond and then stropped it to 0 0.25 diamond. Um, so yeah. That's that's like an edge retention leashed, un, unleashed on steroids. So he's using proper edges, a bit like how what might you know Michael Christie gets these fantastic edges on his knives. Like the per, he's after chasing that perfect edge, from what I can see anyway on his on his videos, he's doing that and then doing my rope cut test. He is using rope that is slightly thinner, like nine point five millimeters. So that would add up, I guess, over a thousand odd cuts as well. But interesting, super interesting anyway. Um, I'll just invite him to weigh in with in the comments if there's anything more he wants to say, but that's been super cool. And it does show that the edge means a huge amount to actually, in practice, if you own knives, to put the right edge on a knife is gonna get a huge amount of that extra result for you. Mine, as I said, my workshop, it's just repeatable and it's easy for me to do more and more of these tests. In reality, when I'm actually done with my edge testing, I'll go to my shed and I'll put like a nice, you know, this is, about, this is wearing about 18 and a half degrees per side. Uh, this is now, it's a little bit higher. It's a quite, quite a thin bevel on this K390. And I have a feeling this would cut a lot more on my rope test. And that's why I've been doing those edge retention unleashed as well. But Jared has been putting like crazy edges on his knives, which is awesome. So that's really, really cool as well. So there's been that. Um, I've had some like you, constructive criticism and I've just had some shitticism. <laughs> Shit, this isn't. But it's what it is. But yeah, a guy today, completely right in saying, when I put my workshop on, uh, the, sh the, the, side, the grind of the knife alters how much of the blade goes against the belt, which is, yeah, most likely a very, very accurate statement. Uh, I'll go and grab the workshop. I'll, uh, we'll see. So, his point was, so when, when I sharpen the knife, when you use the workshop, you put the knife into the guide and you push it up against, against this side of the guide. And if you let it touch the bottom of the plastic guide there and you pull it back through, that is a 20 degree edge if you use this guide. So what he's saying is, yeah, if you were to use this knife, which is like a 3.5 mil thick knife, and then you would use this knife, which is a, a hollow grind, 4.5 mil thick, then yet there is a ch possibility that no matter how well I push it up next to the side there, that the grind is steering it differently into the bottom of the belt. It's still really this bottom triangle here, like the very bottom triangle, 
that's actually guiding the knife into the belt. And I force down every single time into that and do it. But yeah, I would suggest you're onto something there. And I'm not gonna, I'm, I'll never deny that these tests aren't flawed, like absolutely never. But yeah, definitely a chance that if I use varying grinds, then yeah, it probably would be a noticeable difference. I wouldn't use, I'd draw the line at using a knife this thick and with this weirder grind for my cut tests really at all. Plus it's a worn cliff. But when I look back at most of my knives, most of them are about the same, the same thickness behind the edge. And most of them have been either tall sabers or complete flat grinds. But yeah, by all means, definitely another thing to take with a pinch of salt with my tests. Absolutely. So that was a completely fair, fair criticism, fair call. Then I've just had people who say, like on my Y start, I had some just some dickish guy, just like, self, you're not a, you know, this should be done by a metallurgist, not a self-proclaimed steel expert. I'm just like, ah, oh, I'm not a steel, I'm not a steel expert. Let this be the video where I remove any inferred proclamation that I'm an expert. I'm just a guy who cuts rope at his house and does rust tests and just fucks around in my backyard, tries to learn more about steel in my own way and share it with you. Um, so yeah, sheesh. Um, and then it isn't another guy saying that the only steel anyone needs is 1095 and 440A and that, um, that yeah, massive long, um, let me see here. First he started by saying I was babbly and I can't understand, he can't understand half what I'm saying. So obviously a great first impression there. Like I'm, a, yeah, I'm, I'm all ears from that point because this is social skills 101. Um, just the test I'm doing a complete BS. So not steels I'm using. I mean, I, I generally vouch for if a big company puts a name on the steel. I mean, I've been proven wrong a couple of times now, but generally, I'm pretty sure that Spyderco saying K390 and a K390 knife is that. Anyway, um, the truth is 440A and C are, bo are both better steel for knives and most of the st super steels. Um, you never know what you pay for with steel today. You never get what you pay for with steel today. Yeah, that could be true. Um, you either get a lot more or you get a lot less. You know, that's, that's, you know, I can, yeah. There's a lot of pricing weirdness going on with steel shortly. Um, edge retention is an incredibly stupid test for a person to do. It's impossible to do it right with human hands in the works. Under lab conditions where the tests are all done without bi biased human hands. So this is back to the bias thing. I think he's trying to say that I have an agenda that I want, um, and yeah, this comment's crazy. And I shouldn't, you know, they don't say, don't feed the trolls. But I'm not feeding them anymore because I've hidden them. I've hidden you, James. Sorry, man, but fuck, this was, this was tiresome, man. I mean, it's just not how you talk to people and get the responses you're after. So there's been a bit of that, which is just a byproduct of it being more and more often done. But the best thing that's been happening is other people are doing their own tests. People have been actually using their knives and really, if you're, a, if you're a knife company that's putting out steel that is not labeled properly or is just not the steel you're saying it is and you know that and it's not an accident, then maybe you should be on a bit of notice because people are going to start, people, people are going to start actually testing these things and that's the best. Like, I mean, even if not everyone's doing a YouTube video series on it, I just think that the best lesson you can take from all this is take your knife and actually see how much it's going to cut and see if you're... Maybe what James was saying, see if you're getting your money's worth from your steel. See if the price you paid is worth that many cuts. Because the steel that I often sort of detract a bit from is that N690. I haven't found that it cuts anywhere near what a lot of makers are charging for. Fox Knives will see an N690 blade for $300. And they sort of say that it's, the implication is or the inference is that that's an amazing steel. When it just doesn't seem to hold that edge for me or for, I've had others about the same VG 10-ish level that I've discussed with. So, so yeah, sorry, I got a bit bogged down in the negativity. It's one of those things. This is my main outlet for things. So I'm not gonna get. Hey, we're gonna talk to people in my real world about. Hey, wife, come and check out what this guy said. Ah, there's a couple of other YouTubers I I banter with about like the the commenters. It was just like, whoa. This guy, but like it's, um, yeah, so sorry about the verbal diarrhea about it, but man, like if you don't like my testing and you haven't got like a, I don't know, and you know what, this is kind of my bubble and this is my little zone and I'm not going to particularly, you know, I'm always happy for constructive discourse and you'll see that. You'll see I don't block everyone who says, I don't think your tests are quite right because this, this, and this, but when you just out and out say that I'm biased or I'm doing this for some sinister reason or I need to, let's have a look, <laughs> let's have a look. 
I need to um, know better than... I don't know I'm giving him his big day in the sun, but this is the last message you'll ever get from him because he's blocked. <laughs> but like, really though, you should know better than to do tests like this. They not only prove nothing at all about the steel, they say they say thing, uh, things, I guess, about you that probably aren't really true and that you wouldn't want people to know even if they are true. That's intense, James. That's, you know, and that's, uh, I mean, just because I'm cutting rope in my backyard and ranking how much the steels do versus each other, a little bit too intense, man. So, sorry. Um, yeah, I'm always happy to talk, but if you start getting like that, I'm probably just gonna block you. Because as I said, and I've said this before, my economy here is fun, it's not money. I'm running this at a massive loss. I spend like, my, I get a bit of AdSense revenue, it all goes on rope, it all goes on work, workshop belts. Fun is my economy here. If you reduce the fun by being a pill, you're just gonna get blocked and you can go and bother someone else. To tell, go and tell PewDiePie how terrible at gaming he is. You'll probably get about the same reception, which is, from this point onwards, being completely ignored. So anyway, steel testing, back to that. My favorite steel at the minute is still LC200M. It's got a really good balance of doing everything right, cuts well, stain resistant, hasn't needed it to be impact resistant because it's on a pocket knife. Love this knife still with Spyderco. Um, Spidey Chef. K390 has soared up there because even though it didn't cut as crazy well as I thought it might have, I've had some instances lately with this. I freed a lawnmower from its box with this the other day and with the new edge, which is the really fine edge, not the workshop edge, it made full on belly to gravel to, to uh, concrete contact and did not shit itself. So that was really, really heartening to see. So it's got some toughness in there, which is cool. Didn't chip and roll out. So K390 is zoomed up there. It's um, up there with M4 now. It's a steel that I really respect. Um, nice, nice, good qualities to it. Um, S35VN, if I had to make a knife and I wanted to keep the price down to sell to a wide market, I'd use S35VN. When it's done right, like in this zero tolerance, zero to 20, yes, that's right, I like zero tolerances, and I like this ZT when it's done well, and this knife it is. Um, this one is completely fine and really impressive on the rust resistance uh, uh, attribute as well, which in my rust resistance test, it did really, really well at. Um, CTS XHP, still really, really good stuff. Uh, I heard some people pipe up and say that it's not particularly rust resistant, so interesting. I'm gonna have to strip this one off maybe and rust test it, who knows, future video. So yeah, those are my favorite steels at the moment, the ones that I've sort of, you know, been, been happy with, being, you know, it, you know, it's not Maximet. How do I feel about Maximet? I likened it the other day, talking to that Rob from Apostle P, to a bit like a Bugatti Veyron. It's like a super interesting technical achievement when it's done right. Very, very narrow scope of use, making something that hard, that long at edge retention. Um, as I said, it's probably about as much use to the average knife user as the Veyron is to the average motorist. As in, you might be, if you had the cash and you've got the resources to have one that's spare and use it every now and then, or use it for a very specific task, a la driving around a racetrack, or a la cutting lots and lots of cardboard over and over again, it might be the steel for you, but apart from that, I think it's a little bit too much, almost. But that's just me. So that's my little thoughts on Maximet. But overall, it's been a good time. The tests are gonna continue. My channel goal though, Rockstead Heisen. One of those Rockstead factory edges, it won't even be on my ranking list. I'm just curious to see how much rope one of those buggers cuts. So that's the next goal, the Rockstead Heisen uh, is my next sort of unleashed edge retention test that I'm saving for. I hope to have it by the end of the year. Not as many knife purchases happening, maybe some knife sales. Um, so yeah, keep an eye out for the Heisen at some point though. See how much rope that bad boy cuts. That Rockstead Mirror Crazy Factory Convex ZDP Edge. Nice. Anyway dudes, hope you've enjoyed this little vlog. I hope you don't mind this very informal structure. But I'm home alone and I feel like talking and you are the people I chose to talk to, so. Friend. Oh, steel friend.